So I'm happy to announce uh, Thomas. Um, so I think um, both in life as well as in our uh, little filter bubble of data science, uh, there's a couple of topics that definitely deserve a little bit more attention. Uh, and if you're in data science, what I think is one of the more underappreciated topics is drift uh, and like shifts in populations because you can have a great model, but then the world changes and then your model's not that great anymore. Um, so with that in mind, uh, Thomas, I'm very curious on what you have to say on the topic. Go ahead. Thank you. So, uh, hello and greetings from London. Uh, actually, thanks Max and Vincent for a great discussion. It was very interesting to listen. And uh, yeah, it's my pleasure to have you here, guys. And uh, also thanks for the uh, invitation for the PyData. So, uh, I want to present here something that we use internally at ING. And since it was very useful for us, we thought it would be also very helpful to share this with the community. So today's presentation is about population shift monitoring, also a so-called covariate shift problem. So the basically distribution shift in the uh, independent variables distribution. And uh, yesterday there were quite some questions regarding the data quality monitoring. So hopefully this presentation can uh, answer some of those, or maybe this package could be helpful for those people. And as you can see, probably from the name of this package, uh, it stands for Population Monitoring, POPMON. Uh, so shortly about me, myself. Uh, so I'm Thomas Shostak. I'm a data scientist at ING, uh, specifically wholesale banking advanced analytics. And uh, I've worked there already for one and a half years. And the first half of my career at ING, I've been focusing on this uh, basically solution of uh, uh, population shift monitoring and uh, as a result, we came up with the package that we would like to present uh, in this presentation. And uh, yeah, the basically the short outline would be, uh, first we're gonna talk about the motivation, the problems of the population shift, uh, also present the pop PopMon solution. Uh, I'll give a short demo. I'll also uh, show the, the, the result of the library. What does it actually of the package? What does it actually, uh, the out, uh, what's the output of the package? and also the internal use case uh, after applying this on our own ING data. So our why was, um, we have noticed that our machine learning models and data were not being monitored carefully enough. And after looking at some open source solutions, uh, we haven't found any that would satisfy all of our criteria. And uh, since we had past experience in doing this right, we have decide, decided to implement our own solution. And some further motivation why we would like to do this. Uh, we would like to have reliable and consistent models in production. And we would like to be uh, sure that the incoming data and predictions are consistent with the historical data on which model has been trained and tested initially. And why it is important is because if input features change, then we cannot guarantee that the test performance uh, will be the same as described in the model design. And also we would, we would like to have a full control of continuous retraining of deployed models. So we wouldn't have to think twice, for example, if, the, if uh, when the data has changed, whether uh, the performance will stay the same or not. Um, we need to know that the distribution of the new data is similar uh, to the old one. And if it's not, does it actually affect our uh, final performance of the model? And it's also, as a bank especially, it's very important to uh, store uh, as many intermediate results as possible. So if uh, some reporting is done or audit, it's always good to have some paper trail and some uh, basically uh, uh, some, uh, some performance results and some uh, data aggregations to, to, be, to be able to backtrack uh, why your performance went down or how you are developing your model. So probably, uh, you're familiar with these issues. These are some common uh, data issues, which would na uh, namely would be population shift, data rot, and time dependencies. So population shift, we are uh, discussing here in this presentation. Data rot would be something that, uh, for example, if you have data which is too old and you don't want to use it anymore in your data set because it's not uh, in your trained data, since it's not relevant anymore, and time dependency issue, because sometimes uh, you're training on the, the train data, but you're not taking into account that there might be some seasonalities or a trend uh, going upwards. So for example, some distribution is going up or down and distribution are changing over time. So you would like to take this also into account when building your model. Um, we also split monitoring in uh, three main parts. 
which uh, in this case are data monitoring, predictions monitoring, and model performance monitoring. So for model performance, there are quite some solutions, quite some open source solutions that we have already tried ourselves as well, uh, namely MLflow and Seldon and others, probably have heard about those. So this, uh, this basically part is covered quite well, but what we haven't found uh, to, to be covered is basically data monitoring and predictions monitoring. To be frank, MLflow and Seldon, they try to cover, uh, but for, uh, they do cover uh, basic data profiling, which is tracking mean and standard deviation of the data. But as we'll see from uh, some of the examples later, this is not enough if you really want to see if your data is changing over time. So that's why we decided to focus on these two problems, which are also quite similar. Uh, if you'll, you'll see that in the next slides. So here you can see basically in this image how the data points are shifting and therefore the histogram of the data is changing. Uh, however, the data profile stays exactly the same. So here you can see on the bottom the box plot. Uh, so basically the data profile, you can see mean and standard deviation of the data. And even though there is a, a very big shift in data points, uh, and, and data distribution in general, uh, the data profile doesn't show that at all. So if we would be tracking this and uh, say, okay, so our data doesn't change, so our model performance shouldn't change. No, that's not right because our data is actually changing. We are just not monitoring it correctly. So another two examples, uh, how we would like to visually inspect the data. So for example, if we train data on, uh, in this case, train data uh, on the left side is uh, red histogram. If we train on this data and later try uh, to apply our model, what has our data has shifted, so our incoming data or test data becomes the blue one, we will we shouldn't expect exactly the same performance as if the data would be in the shape of the red data, which is the trained data. And also on the right on the right side we can see the data in 2D. Uh, so basically uh, you can see two features here, and you can see that train data uh, is very different from test data. So if you, once again, if you train your model on train data and your test data starts to shift, starts to drift away, you would like to notice this and to retrain your model or uh, together with the train data or just on the new test data, depending on your use case. And this is only two dimensions on one dimension. Imagine if you have a lot of dimensions and a lot of features and you would like to maybe track it more automatically because you cannot inspect all these changes visually for all these features and over a different period of time, especially when your models are deployed and running maybe for many years and the data is constantly incoming. So we have developed our pipeline. So basically this is one of the core structures of uh, Popmon. So we get some new data, which is incoming, constantly incoming to our package. Uh, we histogram this data, and then we have we we can have we can also compare to the previous test data, but we can also have some trained data separately, which we know is good. So we would like to compare our test data to that data. So we apply a bunch of statistical tests. I'll show you later, and from those statistical tests, we get a bunch of metrics on which we apply uh, different thresholds, which are set by business rules. And from there on, we get alerting in our reports. So basically, we can inspect what has happened in our data. And how the histogramming works. Uh, so for example, if you don't have the reference data, we can also just compare this uh, data to, uh, to itself. Basically, if we have uh, some, uh, some, let's say, one year of data, we split this data per week. And we want to see if this data was consistent over each week. So for example, if we zoom in on week one, we want to compare if the week two is similar to week one. And how do we do this? We overlay this data on top of each other and we get two histograms on top of each other and we can see that they're quite different. And we can visually see it. And as I said, it's yes, it's very manual process, but how do we actually make it uh, automatic and more tangible? So we apply a bunch of statistical tests, like in this case, uh, Pearson correlation could be applied, chi-squared, Kolmogorov, Smirnov, and also many more tests. Uh, we have applied some uh, or implemented more tests from uh, different papers. 
And we have made uh, this functionality of impl implementation your own test uh, very easy and intuitive in our package. So you could try uh, go and try uh, your favorite statistical tests as well. And uh, you would ask why histograms? So histograms are very useful because um, it contains a lot of aggregated information. So basically it's, it's good for us, especially when you work in bank and, or when you work with uh, a lot of uh, consumers data, you want to avoid to have data privacy issues and histograms aggregate this information. So basically it's difficult to link this data back to a specific person. Uh, also, it's good for size. So basically histograms are very lightweight, so it's easy to store and also light for sending over APIs. So imagine you don't want maybe to send the, the data to a server where pop on is running. You would basically would like to maybe first create those histograms, which would be very lightweight to send them over API. So you don't leak your data. Uh, the, the API is very fast. You, you don't uh, burn too much uh, internet bandwidth because yeah, you don't have to send so much data as in like sending gigabytes of uh, your raw data. And also monitoring works identically with both big and small data because in the, when, you, when you put it in the histogram, it doesn't matter how many rows you had before, if you still have the same number of bins, your count basically will just change. Um, so in, 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 the, in, the say, in the case of monitoring, this is very beneficial because it doesn't matter how much data you have, the pre-processing will take some time, yes, but after this is done, uh, it's as fast as with big data as with small data. And it's also more visual, it adds a lot of information. So you can immediately see distributions of data from histograms. And also, as we saw from before, useful for applying all sorts of statistical tests. Uh, so we touched uh, we touched now like data monitoring, but if you look at the prediction monitoring problem, and specifically if you have, uh, for example, posterior probabilities as an output from your prediction model, this can be interpreted uh, very similarly as a data monitoring problem, because we can histogram same probability same probabilities and uh, just input this as a feature, as as a as a data feature basically, and apply exactly the same statistical tests. You can uh, see the trends. Is the mean actually shifting of this histogram? Do we get an improved performance overall and these type of things? Uh, so this is very powerful, very powerful. And for more advanced users in cases of this library, you can even later correlate uh, this data, uh, this, these probabilities to uh, the changing data. So that's also a very interesting use case. Uh, so Popmon is useful for both data engineers and data, uh, data scientists as well as data analysts, of course. Um, so it's great for data exploration. You can immediately see data patterns, trends, seasonality outliers. Uh, it's also very valuable for uh, early inspection of covariate shifts, uh, but it can also be used for uh, data ingestion pipelines. So you can monitor your incoming data to prevent drop in performance. So for example, as, as we already discussed, if the test data is, doesn't look the same as train data, we cannot guarantee the performance of our model. And also we have made stitching available. So basically if we already applied some monitoring on uh, some data and you have more data incoming in batches, so over a certain period of time or over some uh, records. So let's say you have a batch of thousand records, you can basically stitch it to uh, existing data and apply a pop on, on it and see if this a new batch is actually uh, similar to the data you have seen before. If it's not, you would like to alert and look into that data. So uh, recap on some of the concepts. One of the concepts was profiling. So uh, we, we also do store basic statistics such as mean, standard deviation, median, uh, also, but also uh, we apply a statistical comparison, statistical tests, and also we have multiple reference points. So for the profiling part, your favorite statistics, um, also statistical tests on histograms in the statistical comparisons, chi squared Kolmogorov Smirnov. But what I would like to zoom in here is that we have multiple reference points. So you could say, as already mentioned, you can look, uh, for example, at the incoming data, you can compare it to the previous incoming data. So let's say at this new batch, you can compare what was the last batch and does it look similar uh, the data in the new batch. Or you can say you have a holdout uh, train data set that you compare your newly incoming data set to. 
You can also say compare a new batch of data to, let's say, rolling sliding window of 10 last batches, the mean of 10 last batches of, of that data. So yeah, different reference points uh, for different types of uh, business uh, purposes. And uh, we also have a so-called uh, concept traffic lights, uh, which is uh, the way we alert. So there are two ways of alerting. Uh, one is uh, static, uh, static and one is uh, more dynamic. So the static basically would be you define a rule and you say if data is outside of some range, so let's say between 100 and 1,000, if the value is outside of this range, we want to alert. But this is very uh, tricky because you would have to define these specific rules for each feature, uh, which can be uh, very cumbersome. And also it's, it's might be, it might be very difficult because data is also changing over time. So what we propose is uh, also dynamic uh, configurable bounds, which are defined by uh, standard deviations. So we remove this burden from user to actually uh, specify those uh, traffic light bounds. And how it works, basically uh, we convert uh, the data points into, a Z into basically standard scores. So we take each bin. So here, if you see this plot, uh, we get, a, uh, for example, a mean of histograms over time. So we have here 52 weeks. And we compare how this, me uh, how this mean of each week compared to the reference data that we have somewhere left out. So how do you compare this? We take mean of each week. So basically, each of this bin, uh, we subtract the reference, the expected value of the reference data, and we divide by standard deviation of this reference data. And based on that, we can plot this data, uh, you can see in the right plot. And uh, after setting the configurable uh, monitoring bounds, you can see that some of those uh, data points are outlying, but that's uh, specifically for uh, this presentation because uh, we set those configurable bounds quite low just to see that it's actually working and some data is outlying. But ideally, in the perfect world, uh, those cases would be a bit higher. Maybe uh, those, those uh, configurable bounds would be like four and seven so that we catch real outliers. Uh, and yes, to maybe just as a quick explanation how the future plots will look like. So because before I presented uh, histograms per week, so in the, the other plots that we're going to look at, it's going to be a more over time because we, uh, we convert all those week, uh, histograms per week into some metrics. So for example, in this case, we, uh, we profile this week. So basically a histogram of one week into the mean. So we say that uh, this first bin is the mean for that week. And that goes over time. So if we have some uh, training data, so let's say our reference da data, uh, we try to create uh, those uh, expected, how do you say, uh, the, the mean for the reference data and the standard deviation for reference data. Because based on that, we'll evaluate uh, the outliers of our new incoming data. So after doing this, after getting mean and standard deviation of this uh, reference data, we apply those traffic light bounds on the new data. And once again, because we set a bit lower uh, thresholds, uh, we get quite some outliers. In this case, six outliers. Uh, however, this is just to demonstrate the purpose and how this all works. So we use reference data to define those traffic light bounds, which are automatic. And based on that, we alert in our uh, Popmon report, which I'm going to present soon. Uh, so once again, yeah, Popmon got released in April 2020. So it's very recent, but it already has got quite some handy features. So just a short summary before we move on to the demo. So I would suggest using Popmon yeah, to monitor the stability of Pandas or Spark dataset. It helps automatically detect changes over time, trends, shifts, peaks, outliers, anomalies. Uh, it's very handy to have an alerting based on these dynamic business rules. It's also very easy to extend. You can make your own data pipelines. I'll show later how to do it. And you can also implement your own statistical tests and it will automatically show up in your report. And so far we looked more into 1D histograms. So basically for per one feature, but you can also uh, create features, uh, basically 2D histograms from two features and more. So how, how would you use Popmon? Uh, in this case, it's a very simple example. We import some uh, data sets. So in this case, a current insurance data set, which is a fake data set. And 
just by importing Popmon, we basically extend the pandas functionality and we add an extra function, which in this case is a Popmon stability report. And just by calling this function and specifying uh, your uh, date column or batch column, you can basically get the report and simply output it in Jupyter Notebooks just by calling uh, this variable which stores the output of the function. Uh, here is even simpler example. So if you already have your data frame somewhere uh, before in the previous steps in your Jupyter Notebook or anywhere in the code, you can basically import Popmon, call this function, and with this uh, additional function to file, you can basically store your HTML report. So no internet traffic is required. This is also works offline. So once you have this HTML file, all the libraries, all the libraries are in the file. So basically you can send it over and it's gonna work for everyone. So this has been quite some talk. Uh, I'm just gonna show you how it looks like in real life. So basically this is the Popman report. Uh, I apply this Popman uh, library on Kaggle dataset. This is basically flight cancellations and delays dataset from 2015. And so you can, um, you might be able to see quite familiar features here. Once again, we get our, uh, on the x-axis, we get the time axis or could be also batch, depending how you define your problem. But in this case, it's time. We histogram our data per two weeks. So in this case, we can see that count so basically the number of uh, flight, can uh, flight cancellations or flights happened uh, per two weeks, it was around 2000. Uh, so that's how you should interpret uh, these, uh, these bar plots. And this, this is quite handy because you can immediately see all the profiles that you can actually also define yourself. So some basic statistics, um, you can here easily change features. So something what is uh, interesting here that I immediately noticed from this data and which also makes sense is that you can see that uh, canceled uh, gets value one or zero and that we, we see the spikes in cance flight cancellations around the period of Christmas or in the winter period because obviously uh, there are more flights canceled due to weather uh, conditions. So this can be obviously seen from this data and uh, based on our traffic lights, you can see that this data is outlying. It's above the yellow line. So something we could look into, something that would be interesting for us to look in if we train this on, uh, if we train our model on this data. Another section is comparisons. So this section basically entails all these uh, statistical tests that I described. So chi-squared here, so it looks a bit cryptic, but uh, once you get a grasp of it, so it becomes very intuitive. So basically you can see how the chi-squared was changing over uh, different weeks. So here we compare uh, each week with the previous week. That's what it's called previous. Uh, so for example, if you look at canceled, we can see that some weeks had very odd behavior. So we would like to zoom in, zoom in maybe on these specific um, weeks and look what has happened here. We can also see it to the reference data. So ref chi-square. So we can also see that in the winter periods, those uh, uh, basically there were more flight cancellations. Um, also with something a bit more handy is the immediate traffic lights. So you can see that uh, if, if you got any uh, yellow or red lights. So here you can see red because uh, those last uh, bins didn't have enough data. So, but that's also a good indication that our last batch didn't have enough data. So good for testing purposes. Um, but you can also see that there were a bit more uh, odd behavior in winter here regarding cancellations. Also, we have more aggregated alerts. So here you would like, if you would like to see everything for all the features, so number of red alerts, number of yellow and green alerts. And also if you would like to expect histograms itself. So for example, in this case, we had airlines and how do those air, how do how do those histograms compare to the previous week and to the reference data? So in this case, we compare the airline distribution. So basically, specific American Airlines, how does this distribution change over those weeks? And also, we can see how the canceled uh, data has changed, and it's more interesting also airtime. So this is uh, the report. Um, 
And also, I want to show something extra here. So basically, if we go here uh, in our GitHub and open this link in Git and in, uh, in, in uh, Collab, I've actually executed this for us uh, to make it quicker. So we also install here PubMon. We read the data. We show the data. Uh, this is also some dummy data, and we would like to uh, generate the report. It just works here out of the box in in uh, Google Collab. So basically, we call a stability report. We say which features we want to see. So in this case, we specifically specify what we want to see. But if we don't defi define features here, it would basically just create all the features from the data frame. And also, you define time width that you want to see like over two weeks or every month or every week. So it depends if you have some prior knowledge about your data and the seasonalities and these type of things. Maybe this is a bit more uh, handy to configure this beforehand. So this is the report. We're going to skip this for now. But what is also very interesting that we don't necessarily have to work with this report. If you don't like the report, and but you like the functionality of this uh, library, of this package, uh, you can basically just use the output of this. Uh, so basically by calling the data store, because we store uh, in the data store, we store all the intermediate results. So same profiles, comparisons, uh, dynamic bounds, and all these things, we store them in data store. And we can basically plot them ourselves here on, in singular plots without need, uh, without need to run the whole uh, reporting stuff. Uh, so here, for example, if we look at the data store, specifically profiles, we can see what keys we have. So these were the features that we defined. And let's say we want to see all the profiles for the age, for our feature age. So we get all the profiles, mean, standard deviation, and quantiles, all this kind of stuff. Uh, if we want to be a bit more specific, we say, okay, we're interested in these and we want to inspect that. This is data over time. So basically, uh, as we have defined, it's uh, it's uh, been per two weeks. And we can easily plot this ourselves without need for the whole report. So just in a couple of lines, we have uh, got this uh, nice and handy plot. So uh, let's come back to the presentation. So you might be wondering, how do you create uh, such pipeline uh, one myself? So a more, maybe, maybe a bit more custom report. And here I'm presenting a very simple pipeline. So what you basically have to do is the importing uh, the building blocks, which are important on top. Uh, you can define your business monitoring rules. It also works if you don't define them because we have uh, some uh, good automatic uh, monitoring rules, which uh, in this case would be 7, 4, minus 4, and minus 7 as well. Uh, but I just left it here just uh, for the demonstration that it can be easily changed. Uh, then if you look a bit uh, below, you can see the data store object, which is basically a dictionary in this case. We, it's, it serves as an intermediate state. So when we, uh, when we apply these modules in our pipeline, you can see that in the list of modules, uh, for example, his splitter, that uh, these modules have uh, different arguments, such as read key and store key. And these are basically referring to the place on data store, where to store the output of this module, and where to pick data from. So basically, these modules are picking data from data store and outputting in there. That's where we were able to basically uh, play with our data even after uh, displaying the report, because all this data is being stored, the intermediate data. And then you can uh, play with this data and do further research on that. Um, yeah, as easy as this, you can add your own modules as well and attach extra profiling functions. So in this case, we basically just split histograms. We profile uh, the data. We add one section because in the previous report, we saw all five sections. And uh, in, this, in this case, we generate very simple reports. So it would be just profiles. would be even quicker to generate such a report. Maybe for some users, it's even more relevant to have such a short report without all those traffic lights. And I also promised to present an internal use case. Uh, so uh, we have, uh, by, by using Popmon and applying it on our own data, we have observed a peak in our data set. So once again here, the x-axis is time and y-axis was a chi-square test. And we have noticed that at some point, at some weeks, our data started to look different, very different from the previous data. And we started wondering why. And uh, this is basically the peak. And after going to uh, 
And this peak happened around September 2018, and we were wondering uh, what happened with this data. And after going, after doing some investigation, further investigation on data and talking to data owners, we were told that the data source has been switched to a new data source. And before, we were training basically our model on all this data, so also on the new data and the old data. Uh, but after getting these insights from the business owner, uh, we basically decided uh, to retrain only on the new data. And we have uh, noticed a significant improvement in the performance, uh, so which helped us to improve the model and business a lot in general. Um, yeah, as you can see, this is almost the end. What the future holds for us, uh, we are spreading the word about this package. We have put quite some work. Uh, we have put quite some work in this, and we are also going to use this uh, within ING uh, data quality pipelines because uh, we value this package and think it's uh, very useful with these type of tasks. Uh, we have recently open sourced it, so a lot of new features are still coming up. Uh, for example, as you can see here on the bottom, we have uh, we have came up with this temporal plotting of histograms by using heat maps. So in this case, you could easily debug uh, by visually inspecting uh, your histograms going over time. So this would be some uh, additional feature that we would like to add uh, to the reports. And, uh, but yeah, that's just one of the features. And uh, we would also like to integrate this more with other packages such as Airflow. So you could get uh, reports, let's say scheduled to be uh, made every, every week, every two weeks, uh, just on a regular basis. Um, especially very, very valuable for audits and, uh, uh, as I said, paper trails if you don't want to run it yourself every time. And also, we would like to uh, incorporate this together with the MLflow, which uh, we already mentioned is very good for uh, performance monitoring since uh, our, our package is not currently doing this. Uh, we are very open for ideas and contributions. And uh, yes, feel free to try to implement one of your favorite tests in our package. And uh, yeah, the last thought, are you ready to give your data the attention it deserves? Thank you.